the nations and the language fell down and worship Adventists fell down and worship great common verses 608 when 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 the major players in the Adventist church fall down and worship testimony volume 5 136 testimony volume 5 81 when great light shall go out why because when the music sounded and the worship changed, they fell down in worship to fill their churches. That's why not too many people care about Western New York. You ain't putting in no money. Because if y'all was putting in money, they would come up here more often. They go where the money goes. But if you stand up for Jesus, He'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. How do I know? I know. I know. Three months ago, I had a 401 credit score. My daughter said, Daddy, you need to do something about this. And so I went to the Mormons. That's right. I went to the Mormons. Lexington Law. And they worked on my credit, now it's 600. Come on somebody, I can buy a car with 600. Somebody say, I can buy a car with 600. And if you don't believe me when I leave out here today, look at it. I can get a house without putting a down payment if you got a 600. And if you got a 650, you can get you some solar discs on your house without putting out a dime. What I'm telling you is that all these things are coming. As Malachi Martin said, there's going to be a fiscal crisis, a fiscal crash. When will it appear? When the nation is doing its best. A nation never falls at the bottom, it falls at the top. And when a nation is making all kinds of money, they're making crazy money right now, crazy profit. Did you see what Disney did the other day? $51 million and they bought who? Fox. They got it all! And pretty soon they're gonna have all of us. If we're not straight. Lady told me, I Pastor, I don't have much to give to the church. But she got a hundred and sixty dollar a month cable bill. But she ain't got much to give to the church. I said, reduce it to the minimum and give the money to the church. I'm going to make an investment, I'm going to make it in the house of God. I'm going to make an investment, I'm going to make it in the people of God. I'm going to make an investment, I'm going to make it in the truth of God. You shall know the truth, and the truth of what? Right. The eternal city, Babylon. Not Rome, not the Italians, but the Iraqis. And the wealth of the Iraqis was never the oil. Wake up. They have the richest basin of water in the Middle East. Oh, that nice, cool, cold water. The water of life. Hmm. Boy, for a cold drink. It won't be a yoo-hoo. Come on, somebody, just be cold water. And as soon as America took over, they started sending the water down to Israel. I like America. If you one of their friends, they'll work with you and rob the others. We live in a nation that doesn't care about morality anymore. We live in a nation that's falling apart. And anyone who dares to stand, dares to become a victim. You wanna stand? You Adventists think you gonna stand? She said, when the crowd comes and the storm comes, then the crowd is reduced to the remnant. Hello, the remnant. The remnant are the people that lived the message before the message became universal. It's not universal yet, but people are looking for it. They're looking for the Sabbath. They're looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And they're not looking to 1948. They're not looking to the state of Israel. They're not looking to what Donald Trump did by making it the capital. No friend, look for the capital because it's descending from the sky from God himself. Help us Holy Ghost those communists in the Middle East. Where do you think it came from? Socialism is what built the 1948 gang. But ain't nobody gonna tell you that. Set up, set up, set up. Verse 11, whosoever falleth not down and worship that, he should be cast into a midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Ellen White says there were hundreds, 
hundreds, hundreds of Hebrews in Babylon. And many more than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were leaders. And when they went into the valley and they heard the music, those Adventists fell down and worshiped. We got a lot of Sunday keepers among us. A lot of people that are gonna worship on Sunday because they've never faced the crisis. Ellen White says when the crisis come, it will reveal character. Some have never been saved. Some have never been born again. I, I'm glad I was born again. I was tested, you know. Now we just throw them in the pool and pull them out. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Throw them in the pool and pull them out. And if you come from the West Indies, they don't even throw you in the pool. They kick you in and drag you out. As long as they get them numbers. Come on, somebody say, I know he knows something. And then the rats, the rats in the rat pack. They, they found out that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't buy. Somebody had some principles. Somebody stood up for the truth. But they were ratted out. And Ellen White says the biggest rats are those sitting right by you. Don't turn, because somebody may look at you. People who are rats and ratting people out. You think I'm lying? At the end, who do you think it's going to be? You think it's going to be the Catholics in the Catholic Church or the Baptists in the Baptist? No, it's going to be other Adventists that knew you and knew you didn't live up to the message. Yes, yes. Going to rat you out. Yes, right. And she said, at that time, yes. we're going to have to go through a crisis that we were not prepared to go through. Some will make it because they had some reserves. You remember when they waited for the husband? They had some extra oil. But I ain't giving you none of mine. You can hear them believe that. Everything I got. And somebody said, well, you ain't gonna have no Bible. That's all right, my Bible is right here in my mind. I, I feasted, I remember the, within the first six months in the church, I memorized 1,500 Bible texts. And I'm glad I did. Because when you eat on the word, you strengthen the soul. Somebody say, when you eat on the word. You strengthen the soul. So verse 15 says, now if you be ready. Are you ready to keep Sunday? Are you ready to worship the golden image? And I tell you, in the plain of Dura, when the sun hit the image, it looked like a golden man sparkling in the sun. You know, some people love things that shine. Some people love things that shine. If you shine, boy, you're good. You know, that's why I'm glad I wasn't born black. I wasn't born white, I wasn't born mulatto, but I was born with that Carmel color. I can get in on any group. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know y'all know what I'm talking about. I can mix in with any group. And I want to tell you that a stone is going to knock this image down. And that stone was called the Eben Ben. Ben is son. He been a stone. The sun is a stone. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Then we go on to verse 16. Almost at the end there now. We go on to verse 16. The golden man. Music and what? And the new world order. Don't put pastor. Because if you put pastor, I have to say Dixon. Not Clark. <laughs> Sorry, brother. That means your bullet. You know what I mean? It's your bullet. Verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the National Sunday Blue Law. This passage parallels Revelation 13. He's able. But you're going to go through something. All you Adventists that like to escape pain, you won't make it. Because this is going to be a painful experience. She said 10 times worse than anything we can imagine. But we'll make it. When, when Jesus kept falling on his way to Golgotha, there was a black man that just finished his job in the field, and now he had another job. Get this cross. Get this cross and pick it up and take it to the top of this hill. Sometime when you think your labors are over. Come on, I don't know how old you are. Sometime when you think your labors are over. I don't know what kind of sickness you have. You will have to pick up. Come on, somebody say pick up. You're going to have to pick up a cross and help carry it to Golgotha. 
And if you do, if you do, you're going to sing with Jesus. You know, I used to listen to a lot of people sing, and some of them were real horrible. I mean, horrible. And then I read Zephaniah 3.17. He shall sing a song over the redeemed. Ellen White says Jesus himself is going to sing. I want to be there on that day. I want to be there on that day when he sings. Oh, how sweet it is to be a newborn baby. Come on, how sweet it is to trust in Jesus. I used to sing those old songs, throw out the lifeline. Come on, somebody. Across the dark way, uh, brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore. Oh, Lord, I want to be with you in that day. I want to be on your side and be convicted by your truth and be taken up by your angels that I may visit with my mother one more time. Yes. Yeah. Visit with the people that I know in Mount Carmel that have fallen asleep in Jesus. Yes. Sister Jackson! Yes. Come on now. Yes. And others. Not just Sister Jackson. Because some of the people we think ain't going are going. I hope you go. Or say when you go to the Eden above, God has a place for you. And if you would open your heart up to him, he will take you to that place. There is another place. A place of quiet rest. Yeah. Near to the heart of God. Yeah. The fire is burning. And they've been thrown in if you could place something. Anything, brother. The fire is burning. And they've been thrown in. They couldn't avoid this. Even though they said, listen, our God is able. But if he doesn't, we ain't worshiping on Sunday. We ain't worshiping on Sunday. We're not falling down and following the master of this world. You know, the Bible says that that's the only time he will be revealed as a man. Isaiah 14, 17 says, is this the man that calls the whole world? Yes, this is the man. It's not Donald Trump. It's not even Steve Bannon, but he's close. Y'all ain't got me. Y'all ain't with me. I'm telling you. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. They're going to throw you in the fire. The fire may be the loss of your job at a time when you need it. The, the fire may be you have stage four cancer. The fire may be all your children get killed in one single day. You remember Job, don't you? All of his kids died in one day. And you know why? Because they were in the incest. The sons and daughters were in the incest. They frolicked with their brothers. I'm telling you, God has to clean up the church. Get the church ready. But while he's washing, what did Peter say? Not just my feet, but my head and my whole body. Wash me, Lord, and I shall be clean. Cleanse me, and I shall be white as snow. I'm saying, Jesus, will you do it for me? And I cried out to him and, and I kept crying. Should have been dead before I was 21. And I just turned 68. Been married 45 years to the same woman, have no desire to go anywhere else. I was blessed at the right time, I was called at the right time. I was delivered at the right time. And I'm saying to you, not just for me only, but for you. Get thrown in the fire. No, but the fire, Lord. Do I got to go in the fire? And you got thrown in the fire. But before you call, I'll answer. And while you're yet speaking, I'll say, here am I. And he started walking around with them. They didn't even realize that the ropes had burnt off. When you get thrown in the fire of cancer, thrown in the fire of leukemia, thrown in the fire of drunkenness, thrown in whatever fire you are thrown in, the ropes are going to burn off and you're going to be set free. Do you want to be set free? There's some of you that need to be set free now. I I'm coming down. Don't play with me. My back is hurting. My legs are hurting. But I'm going to lift up a word. And if you want to lift up a word, you want to be connected to him that is able. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to be connected to him that is able. Come on now. Yes. You pray for me. 
me. You pray for me that I finish the work that you gave me to do. I like to live another 20 years. I lift it up. I'll tell you. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. Do you want to be saved? There's somebody sitting out here today that's going through something. I know you're going through something. God knows you're going through something. So come down here and let me anoint you with the word of God. Praise God. Because he's able. I know he's more than able. I know he can do it because he did it in me. Yeah, he did it in me. He did it in Brenda. She never thought she was going to be married to me this long. <laughs> and I pay all the bills. Joyfully, I pay all the bills. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, I pay them how? Joyfully. There's some people so stingy that stinginess ain't stingy. Come on now, I'm calling you. There's room for you. Come on down. Be blessed. Don't live that secret life no more. Get those ropes and chains burnt off. Learn how to say yes to Jesus one more time. Well, oh, I can feel him in my soul. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him in my mind. He's saving somebody right now. Can he please save you? He went up to Golgotha. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name. Save those in this group who made their mind up to be saved. Give them that power that you've given to me. The power to, to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And help me to be like Ellen was on her deathbed. I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded to is able to keep me unto the day of redemption. Somebody want to be saved? Say, I want to be saved. I want to be saved now. But I need power. Save me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody hug somebody and say, be saved. Stay saved. God bless you. Yes, sir.